Hi, this is Casey Sampson, and this video is going to focus on marketing. Marketing is going to be critical in getting your house out into the market. This is not your parents' real estate market anymore. You know, some agents may throw it on MLS, but there's a lot more sophisticated tools out there that we can use. Basically, we're going to focus on first marketing our home during the coming soon period. We want the websites up, the pictures looking great. We want to come out of the shoot looking looking very, very good. We want to be priced where we need it. We think we should be priced at. And so we want to hit basically four targets when we come out of the come out of the gate and are coming soon. We want to go after buyers, both internationally, domestically. We want to go at your neighbors. So, you know, whether it's in your neighborhood or around the world. We want to make sure that we can identify who the buyers are looking for your house and reach out and grab them. The second group we're going to go after is the realtors. They do hold their buyer pool that's looking for, for properties. They possibly have already put in contracts on properties and lost. So these are called stored searches that the realtors have. So we want to reach out to that batch of realtors as well. The third group are the renters. There's a lot of people you know, within probably a mile of your house, 500 people that are renting properties or within the same school district where they love the area, they want to buy, the interest rates are low, they know the prices are getting away from them. So now they're converting and starting to buy. So we want to reach out to all the potential renters in your area. That's our third group. Our fourth group, believe it or not, and some people call them their nosy neighbors, I think neighbors are a great asset. They put the highest value on the schools, the community, the commute, you know, on their neighborhood. So we want the neighbors in the neighborhood to know about the home, know its special features, and be able to offer that to their family, friends, or business associates. Be surprised how many times your buyer will come from a neighbor. So let's get into it and let's take a look at it. So first thing we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to make sure that everything is perfect. We're going to get out of Zillow. That's the number one site that people are looking at. We're going to make sure the pictures look great. We can redirect over to our website. We want to make sure that we look good on Zillow and good on the MLS. So, you know, that is the basic start of this. The next thing in which Julie, my assistant that's been with me for now 12 years, is an expert on social media marketing. So we are really good on creating ads, pushing those ads to the right buyers, in other words, we'll identify who the buyer is potentially for your home. How old are they? Where do they work? Where do they currently live? How many kids do they have? What's their income that they make, you know, to afford a house like yours? So we're going to start narrowing down that and what's called geofencing. We're going to start targeting our buyer pools. Now the MLS and Zillow will take care of everybody. This is about specifically targeting certain people. We'll also have the help of Google ads. And Google ads, let me give you a perfect example. We had a home in Vienna. It was not getting a lot of love from the people around Vienna or its normal buyer pool. So our social media though went nuts. Everybody loved the home. They, uh, you know, it was getting a lot of loves, a lot of shares, a lot of comments. So what happened was Google ads picked up a buyer that was looking at a home in McLean for $1.6 million. It took our ad and it put it in his Wall Street Journal feed, who he's living in New York, in a penthouse in New York. He opens up his Wall Street Journal online. There's our house. He falls in love with it. He gets on a plane. He meets his realtor. He buys the house. This is how sophisticated social media works. So that's another one. And that's going after basically buyers that may or may not have realtors. We're going directly out to the buyers. Most buyers are doing the searching for their home themselves, not, not the realtor. So let's talk about the realtors. We have the address, the email address of every realtor that has a stored search on this property. So we wanna make sure that those realtors have a professional looking, beautiful presentation of our house that their clients are looking for. That goes to the realtor. It also goes to the home buyer that has that stored search. Now, then what we like to do is see if they love it. How many people opened it? How many people liked it? How many people favored it? That is in the predictive analysis, but we need to know, we need to get everything out there in this coming soon period, because I wanna know, do we have a buyer pool that's accepting this house or not? 
The third group we're going to go after are the renters. <laughs> There's a huge number of renters that are living around your property that want to stay in the school district. Um, the interest rates are low. Uh, the prices could be starting to get away from them. So they want to get in on that train. There's your buyer demand. So there's a good chance that your buyer is renting a home in the school district that you're currently in. The fourth group we want to look at is your neighbors. Some people call them nosy neighbors. I don't. I think neighbors are the biggest advocates for the neighborhood, the school district, the area, the town, and they have friends, family, and business associates that have people trying to get into their neighborhood or their area. So, you know, all four of those are important. Go directly at the buyers, go right to the realtors, go right to the renters, and go right to the uh, neighbors. And all four of these are done in the period of uh, the coming soon period. Now, this is basically what it looks like, my dashboard that I'm looking at, when we launch our social media campaign. So as you can see, we've just listed some houses. And in here, you can see that 2.2 thousand, so 2,200 people have looked at this. 164 have actually clicked through to the website. Now, the lower number is if we did not boost it using geofencing or boosting the ad or using Google ads, we would have only had three people click through. That's called the organic click through. But the boosted click through is up at 155. So you can see on a huge amount of people will go to the site because we've targeted the correct people and we've gotten in front of their face so they can click through to the site. So, you know, it's not unusual that we would get 20, 30, 40 times the amount of people clicking through if you use sophisticated geofencing and Google ads. Now, as far as the, you know, our friends, the, uh, the renters are concerned, these are the email addresses of all the realtors, by the way, that have stored searches for a house or a listing. In this case, there's 180 agents. And you can see there's a lot of agents and you can see the email addresses for your, every one of them. So we're gonna reach out and touch all of them. Now. This is the card that goes out to all of your renters. And the card will invite them to the open house. It'll be a spectacularly beautiful card. It goes to the renters and it will, you know, bring them to that open house. It'll also go to a lot of the executive housing uh, places. A person will come into our area. They will be staying in temporary quarters, corporate housing. And then all of a sudden they're, they're doing their search. They need to see about your house, okay? So, so all of this marketing is done, this whirlwind of marketing is done and we're not even listed yet. So on Tuesday, we'll take all the data that we're gathering, I'll look at the websites and I'll look at all of this information and then we'll sit down and determine, are we at the right price or are we not at the right price? Now, to be honest with you, probably three or four out of five, we're right where we wanna be. But on that one time that we are $50,000 overpriced and the market is not accepting this number. We need to know that we need to be able to adjust our price prior to launch. Now that's done in what we call our predictive analysis. And that will be the next video. The predictive analysis has been a breakthrough for us in 2020. Whereas we would normally be able to sell 85, 86% of our listings. Now, in 2020, using this predictive analysis, we now sold 72 out of 74 of our listings because we were tipped off prior to launch that we may be overpriced. So next video, predictive analysis, don't miss it. My name is Casey Sampson with the Casey Sampson team, and we hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks.